What's going on, comicbook.com? I'm Jim Viscardi, and we are continuing our coverage from San Diego Comic Con 2022. And with us in the studio is the Todd Father himself, Todd McFarlane. Todd, welcome. Good, Jim. Good hey, to see you again. Buddy. Great seeing yeah, you. After a hey, few years. Uh, you had some pretty big news this weekend. Yeah, the, uh, yesterday, mid Friday, uh, jumped up on the DC panel uh -huh. with Jim Lee and basically made the big announcement. Were there, I, were, were there I, gasps when you walked out? Um, no, you could see curiosity. <laughs> curiosity, I, there it when is. When I came up, I was going, hey, <laughs> I, I, I understand you guys probably are wondering like why I'm here, because uh -huh. Jim Lee was going to announce sort of the next person I'm about to talk about, but I'm mm -hmm. like, no, 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 no. we got to bring him up after sort of we just sort of hit it, because, I mean, maybe it would have been double curiosity, but I, <laughs> I anyways, I, I told him when I go on, I go, I'm going to explain this in five words. All I need to give, you give me five words, and then we can get into whatever you want. And the five words were Batman, Spawn, Greg Capullo, Todd McFarlane, you know, Capullo, but Batman, right. Spawn, Capullo, McFarlane, December. That mm -hmm. was it. So the crossover right. that we haven't done now in almost 30 years. I was going to say, like, this, was, this has been something that's been percolating for, for Greg a Greg and I like, talked about it off like, and on, off yeah. and on, but minus that, which mm -hmm. has always been there, you know, you and I are old enough, at least I am, that 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 previous Batman Spawn Spawn Batman, there yep. was two of them came up, was literally a generation ago. It was. Right? And so the one thing that is always sort of fun is being around events mm -hmm. and moments uh, that people can do it. And we had a lot of those when we were younger. Sure. And and one of them was, oh my gosh, Watchmen's coming out, Dark Knight's coming out, you know, the, oh, they're going to respond, Batman crossover, the foundation of Image Comic Books, and a and, and hundred others. Mm -hmm. And some of those are now almost folklore yep. to a generation. And so it was like, hey, Greg, we can do something. You and I will have a lot of fun. We'll knock it out of the ballpark. And this sort of next wave of fans will go, wow, I wonder if this is what it felt like at the other one, because we'll make this like as huge event-wise mm -hmm. as that was back then. Right. That's awesome. Um, one of the things I, I in, in looking at some stuff that was uh, that's coming up, I didn't realize that uh, the original Spawn movie, 25 years. Yeah. Ish. No, no, no. In, no all, yeah. right, all these things that you just did in time past, uh -huh. you're going, oh, uh, uh, and so now you're, you're saying anybody that's 25 years or younger. Right. Right? It, that's their lifetime. Right. Right? That it, it's been that, which is why I keep sort of beating <laughs> on Hollywood's door going, you guys are missing it because... You can't go too far. Do you? But do you think like is there an opportunity to like to remaster that one and see if they're like the kind of the, the following that you've got latches onto it to um, kind of I don't know. You know perk some of those, be, that uh, stuff up. Uh, here's what I would say: if and when the move the next movie comes out and it's a success, I'm betting maybe somebody at Warner Brothers uh -huh. New Line, you know, right. it's under the same banner, right. uh, might go, hey. How can we cash in on it, right? <laughs> Let's just re-edit it and do a remaster. So probably. Fair. All right. I mean, that's like that. It's one of those things where, like, when I realized it was it was twenty five, I was like, oh man, like you know, and so many of these movies now are kind of doing the remastered stuff. And I was yeah. like, you know, it'd be awesome to see Spawn remastered. Right. But but it would, I think for them it would have more relevancy. Sure. After, after a new one came out, thing. and they go, oh hey, here was the original. Damn. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, look, Comic Con's back, and yeah. it's been it's been fun uh, this week so far. Uh, I, one of the things that I. In your office, back in um, you know at the McFarland headquarters, you've got a ton of stuff uh, kind of in, in in your office. It's like you know all all your collectibles and things like that. But do you have like a home <coughs> collection? Like what, no, what, oh, yeah. what does Todd collect? Um, it's interesting because remember years ago I bought that McGuire ball right, right for multi millions <laughs> of people. So everybody thinks that everything you buy sure. is of that stature. Of course, and it's, and it's not. I mean, mm. I have a couple balls that I own the top three home run. Balls, uh, Barry Bonds 73, McGuire 71, and uh, Sammy Sosa 66. Mm -hmm. In the record books, that's one, sure. two, and three. But minus that, it's it's really sort of personal geek stuff. Yeah, so I don't know, I, and I think most people are sort of like that, right? Right. That you see something, you go, man, I had that when I was nine. Mm -hmm. And even though if you look, you know, mint and package on eBay, it's <laughs> seven dollars. Right. You just you don't care that it's going to go up in value. Mm -hmm. You just care that you grabbed a little bit of your childhood mm -hmm. back. As a matter of fact, you don't even care if it's in good condition. No, you right? Just, you, just you just want go, it. 
I had that and I, I haven't had it for 30, 50 years and now right. I can get it and who cares if the arm's dangling because right. I remember playing with it. So I have a lot of that. Okay. Right? Little, you, old toys, uh, uh, old baseball cards that I used to think were super cool. Do you have a comics collection? Um, not really. Oh. Not, I mean, I've got oh. some graded stuff, but it's, sure. it's sort of the, some old high end. Okay. I, I used to have a collection that was about 25,000 deep. Oh, wow. I, it was a big one. Uh -huh. um, and more than 25 and then, different ones. And then, your, and then your parents threw them out. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Here's the story you never hear. Dad threw it out. You never hear that story. <laughs> right. So it's always mom. Um, but I had it, and, and it wasn't that it was 25,000 different books. Sure. I was just smart enough as I was starting to collect. It was uh -huh. like, oh, Teen Titans number one. Uh -huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get eight, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Oh, The Death uh -huh. of Phoenix. I'm going to get eight, mm -hmm. right? Frank Miller's Daredevil run. I'm going to get ten of each. Right? So I, was, I had, like, all these right. multiples of these key, key uh -huh. But my brother-in-law and I uh, decided to open up a store oh, uh, in San, uh, just south of uh, Seattle, uh -huh. and it was a card comic one, right, in the, in the early 90s. Wow. And when I was still doing uh, Spider-Man. Uh -huh. And so I, I went, ah, to see that, I'll put my whole collection in. <laughs> right? And I put my whole collection. Now, I used to number all my books. Okay. Because that's why I knew how many I had. Sure. So when I ever get, you know, I go to the newsstand, because mm -hmm. there was no... Right. shops you could go to it not yep. when I was collecting and I'd put like a number on the back book right so somebody somewhere has these mint condition copies and if you go in the back and there's a little number then that was for my collection uh, but the, I ended up putting them there the only thing I kept was a couple of key books that were there and the entire run of Tomb of Dracula that mm -hmm. was because that was mm -hmm. my vibe that I was the, that was your Tomb of Dracula and it wasn't obviously the most expensive I could have gone out and bought it but that was the one I go no mm -hmm. if I could only be on an island and read one series <laughs> right. this that is was it. the one yeah. awesome uh, let's let's talk about the the Spawn movie a bit you you made you made some uh, some pretty big teases about it uh, fairly <laughs> recently um, but one of the things I want to ask you is you know, you you've mentioned that the movie you know is going to be hard R and we've seen a lot of quote hard R kind of stuff in entertainment and so like do you see Spawn doing something more in the direction of something like The Boys Hard R, or more Hard R like, you, like I know you mentioned before, kind of like the some of the horror stuff that we see there. Or is it, does it kind of fit somewhere in between? I think so, I think I think in between, because um, we've got a different group of people on board, and they might not be sort of as darkly bent as sure. I am. I mean, <laughs> if you're asking me, and I've been right. up there before, and I, and I go, hey, I'd make it like ugly, dark, you know, make, children cry uh, right. but the the play we're trying for and we'll see if, whether it works but mm -hmm. we're going to know by the end of this year it's it we're, we're taking a pretty big moonshot of what we think we can pull off in hollywood okay and if we can pull it off there it will be a, a and i don't mean a big deal in terms like oh you're a big deal todd right. i mean like a financially a big mm -hmm. deal and so then once you get into those conversations, then they're going to want to do it in a way that they think they can get their money back. Mm. So somebody else's definition of like mature and sophisticated and R and dark mm -hmm. may not match what I want. But at some point, if we end up consummating that deal, mm -hmm. then they have the right to get their money back, right? Okay. I mean, as a CEO who yep. runs a company, I would want the same thing in return. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I do know who's involved. I do know the direction it's going in right now. We're heading in that direction. I think the visual look of the character itself will dictate sure. part of it, okay. right? And we designed that character mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, right. Greg Nicotero yeah, and I, Nicotero did it. Um, and so all that's there, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I can still get that. Part of like that. even if you dampen it down from my yep. darkness, if you put this look, mm -hmm. then I think you'll keep the seriousness right. of what we're trying to do. Is um, like it is given what we have seen in entertainment and the rise of streaming and things like that. Do you see? Or are you at all tempted if someone said, let's make this a series instead, or like a prestige series, that you would entertain <laughs> the idea? We've had that conversation. Um, and the answer is you should probably think about it. The, the, the thing that's 
and because even they've been talking about, well, what if what if one of the big networks come out and drop a ton of cash and say they want to make it a movie, mm -hmm. a streaming movie? Mm. Um, my only hesitation for that kind of deal right now is that there's no, and maybe I'm missing it, maybe you know, you're sure. smarter than me. There's no data that I can think of off the top of my head that somebody's been able to build a franchise starting for movies with, yeah. starting as a streaming mm -hmm. item, right? Yeah. Now we'll see, Bird Box 2 is supposed to come out, we'll see how that works. But there's no equivalent of the Fast and Furious 8, mm -hmm. you know, even, even Saw 1, 2, and 3, there's not even sort of a, a mm -hmm. lower version of that, right? All those franchises had Started and in went the theaters. in the theaters, and then you came back. Then you can go to maybe some side movies. Then you could go to, you know, a series spun mm -hmm. off from it, and all those other things. But to just go, we're going to build the franchise in a big, big, meaningful way mm -hmm. from streaming. I don't see any evidence of that. If, sure. if anything, I would argue I see a little bit of the opposite. Some big series come out; mm -hmm. they're hot as heck. And two years later, they're forgotten because there's a hundred other series that are out. Yep. And these fantastic shows are in and out in a year or two. And how you build strong brands is you basically, through attrition, yep. over years and at best, over decades. Right. And, yeah. and, and so, I don't know. Well, it depends what the, the offer and what we're sure. talking about. So, it looks right? like you know, we get maybe by the end of the year, we'll get, get a little bit more. Well, 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 well you, sure, you deal at the end of the year, maybe we'll get something next year. So, so, so what, what, look at, we had a big debate on whether we were going to make an announcement here. Right? Oh, okay. And, and that was it. And it came down to that everybody that was involved said, Todd, that's your world. You know better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. We'll let you make the final call. Mm -hmm. And, and what I did was that I, I started asking about timing on yep. a couple of things. And I just thought it might be just a little bit early because what, what I'm trying to do is make another one, two big announcement sure. just as we're going into Hollywood mm -hmm. to sell. Right. Um, and the buzz of Spawn will be at a bit of an apex. Right. Won't hurt too that sure. at that point in New York Comic Con, Batman Spawn comic uh -huh. will be buzzing because we'll have announced all the cover artists show yep. some pages show some interior and we're getting close to the ordering so right. there'll be a couple things now that are buzzing as we walk in going do you want that thing that's buzzing right now mm -hmm. and we just thought i made the calculus if i if i did it here at san diego it might be just a hair too early but what i did was i turned to everybody and said if i'm not then i'm going on record saying we definitively are at new york comic con so there's no backing out now, guys. Mm -hmm. There's no more excuses. There's no more timing. So we've got to drop at least minimum one more bomb mm -hmm. uh, at New York Comic Con. And they went, yeah, sure. And so I, I, all the parties, they all went, yeah, no, we can, we're down with that. All so right. so, it's, so New York Comic Con. As odd as it is, the announcement <laughs> in San Diego is that the it announcement that will be at New York Comic Con. Perfect. Which may be a frustrating thing that hey, I just said. It's so. all right. Uh, well, let's talk about some series. You uh, Can you tell us a little bit about uh, McFarland? McFarlane? Yeah, the, uh, this is a one with uh, Tom Lennon. Fun, yeah. Funny guy. Mm -hmm. You know, some people have seen him and heard of think of him as an actor, but he's a brilliant writer. And um, he, he came to me with this idea with the stop animation, and he had formulated and he goes, but I want to do it with toys, and it would be cool if we could use, like, your toys and whatever else. So uh, we're just ready to go out and sort of pitch that okay. to the people that be, because... Tom got involved in a couple mm -hmm. other projects. Yeah. But it's it's just I don't know, just a goofy stop motion mature thing that looks like it should be for kids, but it won't be, right? right. I mean in the vein of South Park and Team sure. America and mm -hmm. all you know, those kinds of things. So if you like that sort of silly humor, uh, then that's what that's about. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the Raw Ten is you know, again, sort of uh, an an adult sort of dark humor story mm -hmm. with these kaijus that are in there. We've got two other animated shows, I don't think we've announced, that are that are more actually aimed at family viewing. Okay. You know, and, and just sort of fun, mm -hmm. some sort of fun, cute stuff. Mm. Um, that, are, that are kind of totally different out of, outside of the Spawn universe stuff? No, or, animation. Oh, just oh just animation, just, that's you know, what I mean. Cute, cute, cute fun animation oh, okay. stuff, right? All right. You go, what? That's the guy who did this spot. It doesn't make any sense. Right? Um, but I had kids. And sure. At some point when they were young, I had, you know, it'd be like if they were young again, me going, here, you can watch this. You can't watch my other stuff. Right. right. Okay. I had my middle daughter did the voice in two seasons of uh, the Spawn animation. Yeah. 
but she never got to watch it because she was too young. She just did the voice. Right. She goes, Dad, can I see my voice? In about six years, you're not watching that show. <laughs> what are you talking about? So a little bit of that. How do, right. how do I create some stuff that isn't sort of dark and moody and sophisticated, mm -hmm. But it's just sort of fun to watch, right? Hey, it's funny you mentioned that. Though. That that HBO series still is looked back so fondly by fans you know, yeah. to this day, and it still it still holds up. Like you yeah. can watch that now, and it's it's still great. Yeah, that when and I mean, and that's gonna be part of the conversation when we go in. Sure. Uh, and we're selling this one movie that that there are these threads you can pull on. Mm -hmm. There are directions you can go in. And here's why, and here's the data, and whatever else. Oh, by the way, you go do your own homework. You're going to see yep. that this you could do, like you were saying, a streaming show, movies, and animation, and they would all work. Mm -hmm. I think they would all work and hit either, I think, a slightly different audience. And collectively, that's how you get your value out of all right. this if you think we're basically pushing you financially too far. Mm -hmm. right? But the, the deal is just... Here it is. Make the movies and let's let's get it out, right? Yeah. Uh, fingers crossed. It's not just a one picture deal. Last question I got for you. Uh, last time we sat here, 2019. Yeah. You were kind of uh, percolating the uh, ideas for your Spawn comic universe. Oh yeah. With the multiple books. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Dang right. It. Okay. Go back. Yes. Here, here we are. The books are out. There, you, yes. you've set the schedule for them. People are responding well to them. Yes. How's how's that going? So the so to, so 2019 was the Spawn 300 301. Right. Right. And yep. Poof, and that was sort of the catalyst to get this all going. You mm -hmm. and I are talking about. I've gone. I'm gonna lay. It's gonna lay the groundwork. That's right. And then 2021 comes out, and we, I do the Amazing. the four number one books, and yep. they all set some kind of record. Yep. Uh, so. I th here's here's they're all doing great. Let me mm -hmm. just say it in the simplest form. They're all doing great. What's really interesting is I thought that they would level out and that each one would sort of have its own level, mm -hmm. but it appears that they're buying the retailers and or the the you know consumers are buying them almost as a family mm -hmm. because from if you take what the top sale is of those four books, mm -hmm. you know Spawn King, Spawn Gunslinger, and The Scorch, which is a team book. And you take the top sale and the bottom sale, it's very tight. Interesting. Right? It's, and I, I, I didn't think it was going to be that tight. I thought a couple of them would be sort of the, the A books. Mm -hmm. You'd have a B book, and then maybe you'd have a C-plus book. Sure. But it's, it looks like they're all coming in, and they're buying them at like A-minus levels, mm -hmm. uh, which is good because yeah. it's strengthening it across, and it allows me now to think about adding, in which we are, uh, more books and more miniseries and more one-shots mm -hmm. and just keep expanding, expanding, expanding. And then against the backdrop of that, if you get the movie deal done mm -hmm. um, and that goes, then at some point the big play uh, down the line isn't selling Spawn himself, it's selling Spawn. It's the, the universe. The universe, mm -hmm. but that will have to come after sort of Spawn making his move, mm -hmm. bringing them back into the universe and then pushing it back out. So there's, there's still a couple giant, giant plays as big as the Spawn movie play will be, mm -hmm. in my mind, it's the play after that that will that will be the big one. That's incredible, Todd. Thank you so much for coming. Well, by. it's there. Really it's not a crap. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> Hold your breath. <laughs> so. But that's great. We appreciate you taking the time to to chat with us. Yeah, it's, it's glad, always glad a to see you back. Glad to yeah, have some we fun. love it. For more on Comic Con 2022, keep it locked into ComicBook.com.